All right, Tommy, let's help me with this nut here. Oh, oh God. All right, I got it. I got it. All right, I want to be like all the cool kids today. Ask her off for the Milwaukee Admirals. He was one of those guys that did the celebration after he won a big game in a shootout. I want to see if I could do it as an old goalie coach. It's pretty easy. So, this is something I think I might do after every private lesson. Get out of here, Tommy. This is something I might do after every private lesson. Oh. 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 Tommy? Tommy? For fuck's sake, Tommy! Help me! Tommy! Well, I've been feeling like crap. So if you notice my voice being a little bit off, I've been fighting a cold, basically unconscious with my Neo Citroen for the last two days. But I wanted to get this episode out. This is our penultimate episode. For those of you that aren't familiar with that word, it's polysyllabic, meaning next to last. So next week is our last video for season four. And then we're looking forward to moving on to season five. It's a lot of content in four seasons. And we're gonna continue bringing you great content. But today, I wanted to start by talking about bullying. Now, I grew up in Strathroy, started hockey late, and I went through a lot of bullying. I couldn't stand up on the ice. People laughed at me, people mocked me. But my head coach, Larry Routley, was awesome to help manage it. But my teammates were less than friendly. And I know a lot of you out there are going through a lot of the bullying, and it's an important thing to recognize it and realize there's help for you. I'm available to talk to any parent any goalie, anytime. You can direct message me. And many of you that follow my channel know that I do this all the time. So if you're having some negative stuff going on in your hockey, want to quit, you're not getting treated properly, I've been through it, I've been there, I've done that, and I have some good coping strategies, and I'm a resource. Call me anytime. If you reach out to me online, I'll get you my cell phone and we can talk directly. Uh, it's not something that we love, but it's a part of sports, it's a part of life and with social media. Bullying is a very serious thing, and I take it very seriously. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of today's episode where I'm playing with toys, which I'm sure you're going to find exciting, I just wanted to talk about a goalie that I know, and her name is Emily Dewey. She's a 10-year-old goaltender who's been going through some tough times, and she's been battling like crazy, and I am so proud of her. So Emily, this video is dedicated to you. All right, hinging too early. Here's what we got. We've got a guy off to the side of the net, just below the bottom of the dot. Goalie knows there's a guy open over here. There's lots of ways this can be played, and I'm going to show you what happens when you hinge too early. Now, when you see this guy on the back door, a lot of times goalies will end up retreating to the post and hinging back, and this creates a massive passing gate where this guy can put the puck through to the guy on the back door. And this is going to encourage him to pass to the back door, and it's going to make this pass quite likely. I call this falling in love with the back door. The hope is if the pass comes, you can slide over, make some emergency back door save. But at the end of the day, you're never going to get blamed if this guy scores, and the one risk you've got is you make it more likely to do that back door. Now, we certainly can't come way out here. Obviously, that seals the pass, but if they get it through you, he's got an easy tap in. So for me, I don't want to see you hinging back too much on this type of a play. I'd rather have you at the top of the crease here. And then at the end of the day, if this guy goes to shoot, you've got a good angle on him, and you still have a chance to get this pass across here. Now, there's not a coach in the world that's going to get upset if this pass gets through to the guy in the back door. But what you do is when you pull yourself back, hinge flat, you create this massive gate through here. And all of this is a nice passing lane for Matt Sundin to tap that puck in the back door. So don't hinge too early. Don't over challenge a guy. Square up to this guy, but try to mitigate the size of this gate to the back door passing option. All right, here we've got your traditional two on one line rush. And a couple things, first of all, from a teaching point of view, the defenseman has two jobs to do. He's got to stay lined up with this inside post. He could be anywhere along this, but when there's a two-on-one, he needs to be there. The problem comes is if he decides to move over too much to the pass receiver, he creates a gate for this guy to come in, 
and have an attack at the net. So the first thing on a defensive two-on-one perspective, got to stay on this post line here, and he's got to prevent the pass at all costs. Now, when we talk about an angle depth selection for the goalie on this, you don't want to retreat too far back on this type of a play because what's going to happen is you're going to encourage this man to shoot. You're also going to leave a passing gate for the guy charging to the back post. Likely, as well with depth selection, if you over challenge, you're not going to give yourself a chance if that pass gets through. Now, obviously, the defense is supposed to get that, but ideally, if he doesn't, you're still going to try to go over there. So for me, I would like to have depth selection at the top of the crease and he does his job, you do your job, you stay square to this guy, you don't start cheating on the pass so he doesn't short side cheddar you. Now you gotta be communicating, even in the NHL, they go screaming their head off, get the pass, get the pass, or I got the shot, I got the shot. So that's what we need to do on two on ones. This is an odd man rush, two guys against one guy. So when that's the situation, you can't challenge as much. Now, let's take Matt Sandin out of this play. Try not to break my whole board here. Now we got a defenseman and an attacker, and there's no backdoor threat, off puck threat. Goalie's made that read with quick look off the puck. He sees there's nobody over there. Now he can challenge way more and be way more aggressive on the angle. So on an even rush, you can grab more depth because there's no backdoor options. If there's a backdoor option, you have to be more conservative to give yourself a chance. So at the end of the day, you gotta read, is it an odd situation or an even situation? And if it's an even situation like this, you can push out on this guy and give him no option but to beat it into your chest. Nobody to pass to on the back door. Now, we talk about times when you should look off the puck, where you're taking quick looks to the side over here, just to see where the dangerous guys are out front. So when there's a sideboard scrum, these two guys are fighting, you need to take quick looks to see this guy over here, see is he a lefty or is he righty, because when you push over, you don't want to push over to his body, because he's going to see far side and be able to score. You want to know what hand he is, so that when you jump over, you can get perfectly square, Jaguar had too many beers, apparently. And this way you get square to the puck, not to his body. That's a big difference. And it's different too if he was a righty, then you would be deeper over here. That's information you need to know. So when we're looking off the puck, sideboard scrums here, down in the corners another place, and even up high here, anywhere along the boards where they're not immediately about to shoot it at you, that's when you need to be looking off the puck. Here's another situation I like to talk about is the center first guys. Now, we've got two guys down here, wide open, no defense anywhere to be found. And a lot of times what we have on this play is people teaching center first, and I'll show you what that means. As this pass comes out to the guy that's open, they just want the goalie to go to the middle. And the problem with that is, this gives the guy short side and far side. Now, ideally, what I'd rather see is on this play, when your guy passes out, as you come straight out. You don't grab the middle, because that doesn't gain any depth, and you just become a victim then. And if you come out straight along that line, as that pass happens, at no point do you open up the short side, and then he's only really got one side to shoot at, and that makes your life a lot harder, or a lot easier, sorry. And this is a glorious scoring chance. It should go in, so if you ever stop it, my goodness, it's gonna be a huge save. But don't be a middle first guy on this because you give the guy too much to shoot at on either side. You have no chance. It's a hope and pray situation. Your only chance on this is to get a good jump on the puck and come out along this short side post and get to that top of that crease. And if he can somehow beat you over there, that's a heck of a shot. Heck of a shot. Now in this situation here, we got your guy behind the net with the puck, a guy out in front sort of waiting to see which direction the guy goes. Don't be that type of goalie that's out blocking this guy or standing sideways on this guy or, you know, being herky-jerky with this guy. It doesn't do anything and there's no need to stir the guy up. So just stay back there up in your feet and let this guy decide which way he's breaking out and let this four checker stand there. You pretending like you're screening him or putting your glove up in his face does less than zero besides just make you look like a goof. Leave the guy in front of the net. He's not doing anything and if your defenseman plays it properly, He's not going to be a part of the play anyways. So behind the net setups, full control with your defense. Don't mess with this guy sitting at the lip of your crease. Just ignore him. It's not going to change anything. So one thing we want to talk about today to finish off this discussion with my toys is the Royal Road. It's a line that separates the ice from one side to the other. They call this the Royal Road and it was coined by Steve Aliquette, former NHL goalie with the Rangers 
who also does some broadcasting with the Rangers. Very smart, little wordy, but a smart guy. And this Royal Road is crucial because the defensive zone coverage, if your team keeps the puck on one half of the ice and the goalie only has to worry about stopping pucks in this type of a quadrant over here, the save percentage is going to be 950 or higher all day long. Now, if they let the puck come from one side of the Royal Road over to the other side of the Royal Road, the save percentage drops precipitously because the goalie's now got to worry about covering all the angles instead of half a rink. And you can imagine if you put a cement wall up in the middle of a rink and you just had a half rink split up the middle and all you had to worry about was just stopping pucks in here on this side, you'd probably have a pretty good successful outcome. So make sure your defense knows if they don't already. There's something called the Royal Road and when it comes to defensive zone coverage, the one priority is you can let them pass it around all they want, pass it down low, pass it over, but try to have your team conditioned at all costs. Do not let the puck come across Royal Road.